You are listening to the Atlanta Real Estate Forum radio show, all about real estate edition. Shining a light on the movers and shakers in the real estate industry. The home builders, developers, realtors, and suppliers making it all happen. Good morning and welcome back to Atlanta Real Estate Forum Radio. I'm your host, Carol Morgan, and I'd like to recognize our show sponsor, Denim Marketing. Known as a trendsetter, Denim Marketing has been blogging since 2006 and podcasting since 2011. We're currently working on strategies for the Google Helpful Content Update and for ways to incorporate AI into sales and marketing. Contact us if you need quality content for public relations, blogging, social media promotions, or email marketing. Well, we are going to have a really fun conversation today about the housing economy. It's always a huge question mark where we've been, where we're going, you know, what's going on. So today we are fortunate to be joined by our repeat guest, Katie Fiddler. She's Director of Research and Communications for St. Burke, and she's going to give us a view into her crystal ball and what she sees for the rest of this year. Um, but let's just jump into it. Katie, um, give us a little bit of a background on yourself. Yeah, first of all, I appreciate the uh, the in introduction. Um, you know, as you mentioned, I'm the director of research and communications for St. Burke, which is an asset management and development company headquartered here in Atlanta. Um, and for me specifically, I'm actually kind of in the process right now of transitioning back under the umbrella of our parent company, Draft Hat Capital Partners, um, and kind of refocusing what I do back on the investment side of things. Um, you know, aside from kind of the nuts and bolts of my role and what I do, um, I've lived in Atlanta most of my life. Um, I have a degree from UGA and um, and I've been working in Atlanta real estate for over 10 years. Um, so I started in on an office in leasing on the tenant rep side. I uh, transitioned over to more residential investment in about 2015. Um, I've been very specifically focused on the development side of things since around 2019. Then, as I mentioned right now, I'm I'm transitioning back over onto the investment side, um, just given where the market is right now. So it's um, I I feel like I've I've done I'm a jack of all trades in terms of Atlanta real estate, and uh, I love this market. I love living here. Um, and again, you know, just thank, thanks for having me on. I'm really excited to join you guys today. Absolutely. Well, you know, we always say that people never leave Atlanta real estate. They just change positions and change jobs and you've kind of come full circle. So that's kind of exciting. Yeah, so. definitely. Kudos to you. Well, let's peer into that crystal ball of yours for a bit and yeah. talk about what's going on in the market, especially, you know, I know you've done your whole report on Q1. So what does Q1 of this year look like compared to last year? Yeah, so I the first thing I want to say um is that comparing anything to last year 2022 or 2021 is not a fair comparison, right? You know, the housing market both nationally and here in Atlanta was so completely out of whack during the housing frenzy um, that was obviously created by the combination of record low mortgage rates, you know, sub 3% uh, we had demographic tr um, shifts coming in where we had eight millennials aging into um, home ownership, uh, boomers aging into retirement, um, and uh, pent up demand from the pandemic, right? People were kind of locked inside their houses mm -hmm. for three, four, five, six months, and they became really acutely aware of their space and what was working and what wasn't working. Um, and then obviously the work from home movement made it possible for a lot of Atlanta residents to move farther from the urban core because they either weren't commuting into the office every day or they were, um, you know, not commuting in at all. They became fully remote. Um, but, you know, to, so now that I have that out of the way, I'll answer your <laughs> question. Um, you know, when you compare the first quarter stats to first quarter last year, um, should be no shock to anyone listening to this. Almost every stat is down. down. Uh, there's no way yeah. of getting around it. That starts in new home closings do not look good on a year over year basis. Um, I would say the one exception, um, and I know we'll get into this a little bit later, but the one exception to this in Atlanta is lot deliveries. So lot deliveries actually did manage to increase wow. slightly about 3% um, in first quarter of this year as compared, as compared to first quarter of last year. 
Um, and actually, if you extract just uh, deliveries of attached lots, um, which has been a very popular product since mm -hmm. coming out of the pandemic period, um, attached lot deliveries are actually up 13% year over year. Um, wow. So there are some bright spots, even when you're looking at year over year comparisons. Um, you know, I, I do believe that you get a much more accurate comp uh, picture of where the Atlanta housing market currently is when you compare our current stats to the last normal, normal. year in real estate, right, which we consider uh, to be 2019, which was yep. Um, I mean, it was a solid year, mm -hmm. but it was it did not demonstrate kind of this out of whack, um, really unprecedented and honestly unsustainable growth that we saw right. in 2021 and the first half of last year, 2022, yeah. uh, before everything crashed. Well, so, um, yeah. So if you look at 2023 and where we are now compared to 2019, I think we're up, right? In a lot of categories, we are. Um, and and honestly, comparing where we are now to 2019 removes so much of that doom and gloom. Um, and not only does it like make you feel better, it's actually a more accurate picture of, of where of where we are. So that's a new um element that we've started to incorporate into our quarterly reports. You know, we've yep. always looked at things on a quarterly and annual basis. Um, in our first quarter reports this year, we actually did. We wound it all the way back to 2019 and made those comparisons because, you know, as I said, it's 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 unfair, right, mm -hmm. uh, to to compare where we are now to 2021 and 2022 um, because inventory levels of both lots and homes are way different. Interest rates are certainly very different. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just it feels like a completely different world. Right. Well, you know, it's interesting. We started comparing back to 2019 last year with some of our builders website traffic reports just because it was so out of whack the last couple of years. You couldn't really tell. So we were more interested in how it compared to normal than how it compared to last year. And I'm never concerned about how it compares to last month because real estate's cyclical. So comparing March you know, to February, if you're in Atlanta, of course your March website traffic looks better because the weather's warmer and people are out and shopping and they're interested in a new home. It's always going to look better. So it's kind of interesting how there's, you know, all those parallels, but um, absolutely. What do starts look like and how do sales look? Yeah. So, um, you know, starts and sales again, uh, when you look at them on a year over year basis, it'll probably hurt your feelings a little bit. Um, they they are way down. Um, so when you're looking at them on a year over year basis, starts are down a little over 40%. New home closings are down a little over 20%. Um, and lot deliveries are mainly unchanged, but they are down about 2% year 2%. over year. Um, but when you switch your perspective and you go back and you compare those to the last normal year, 2019, it's much easier to digest. So when comparing mm -hmm. first quarter of this year to first quarter 2019, um, starts are only down about 20%, which is still a significant drop, right? It hurts way less than 42%, right? Right, um, yeah. Closings, when com as compared to 2019, they're only down 2%. So they're mm -hmm. basically exactly where they were during that last normal year of housing. Um, and lot deliveries this is really the bright spot. Lot deliveries are up 82% as wow. compared to first quarter of 2019. Um, so, I mean, there, that, and again, that just kind of illustrates why yeah. you get a more accurate picture of where we are when you kind of take a further step back and use the comparisons from 2019 versus year over year. Um, but look, the declines that we're seeing right now, you know, not should not be a shocker to anyone. Um, they're symptoms of, you know, the general market instability that we're seeing. Um, high inflation, we've got some, you know, bank failures that we've mm -hmm. been kind of dealing with, um, you know, in mid-March. We've got really high interest rates and mortgage rates. Um, I think as of yesterday, the 30-year mortgage rate was still up at like 6.7%. Um, and there's a sticker shock factor mm -hmm. to that, right? Um, you know, home buyers got really used to rates, you know, below 4%. I read a stat the other day that 70% of people who have mortgages, their rate 
is under 4%. Wow. Um, and and that stat is even higher, 90% for people with, with rates under 5%. Hmm. Um, so, you know, it, you see 6.7%. And while it's not that far out of whack when you look at the long-term right. average for mortgage rates, um, like in the eight, early 80s, mortgage rates were... 18, 19, 20 percent. Right. Um, but but you know, as, as consumers and as home buyers, we got so used to three and a half, four percent rates that this, you know, looking at a six, five, six, seven uh percent interest rate, it just feels insurmountable. Um, but at the same time, we're still dealing with a lack of inventory, which is propping up home prices, right? So mm -hmm. I mean there's always going to be demand for housing. People are always going to have to move. Um, and there's still not enough inventory for the demand right. that, that exists. So, and that's, you know, keeping home prices from not only bottoming out, but from really taking much of a significant backslide at all. Right. Well, the good news is we have all these new lots, right? Which are probably, you know, you, you look at it, you're like, because you think that really makes sense. Why do you have all these lots if, if de, you know, if we don't have the homes and demand is down or whatever? But we have all these lots because demand was so crazy during the pandemic that builders and developers put the lot machine, you know, in place. And it takes 18 months to 24 months to get those lots to delivery. So they're just now delivering, which is going to be fantastic because we are going to come out of this. And if you read the, you know, some of the economic forecast I've seen, we're going to have a huge rebound out of this with another feeding frenzy of building. So it's going to be fantastic. We're setting ourselves up for a great future, it looks like. In theory, um, keep in mind that a lot of these, dot, these lots that are delivering now spoken for yeah like, that's true too before they before they transition from future to vdl they are yep. controlled they are controlled by a builder um so you know very few percent of these lots will be developed and then hit the market right. um so but, but they'll hit the market with a hoe on them so it's still right. supplying that's that right. demand so it, it yeah will do good things for the hopefully the new home inventory i yep. don't think it will have quite the same impact for for lot inventory. No. Um, but you know, as as I said, kind of at the start, um, you know, I would argue that lot deliveries are are one of the bright spots in yeah. Atlanta, the, the Atlanta market right now. So total deliveries are basically unchanged from where they were a year ago. A, a year ago, although I will say, looking at it on a quarterly basis, there was a pretty steep drop off between fourth <laughs> quarter of last year and first quarter of this year. Now, now, a lot of that is seasonality, right? It's right. January, February, March. Um, you know, I've been in the development world. I feel like it rained every single day in January and February. I think we it had, did. Yeah. Yeah. We got a ton of projects um, that, you know, kept getting that, you know, we couldn't get roads topped because we could not get 36 dry hours. Um, so I'm not, I'm not too concerned about the quarterly drop. Right. Um, and again, I am, um, you know, I, I do think it's a very positive thing that lot deliveries are basically in line with where they were last year. Yeah, um, as I mentioned, you know, attached deliveries are, um, you know, a, an especially bright point. So uh, um, deliveries of, of attached lots are up 13% from where they were in first quarter of last year. And they're up four over 400% from where they were from pre print pre-pandemic levels. That's you, crazy. I mean, an, an astounding increase in attached lot yeah. deliveries. Um, d detached deliveries were down about 10% right. year over year, but even detached deliveries are up almost 30% as compared to where they were before the onset of the pandemic. Um, That's interesting. So, so again, it's like you, you see the year over year comparisons and you're like, oh, like, we've crashed. We're, we're living through a crash. But then when you go back and you compare to the last normal, but very strong year, you're like, never mind. Yeah. It's, you know, it's a, it's a we're, yeah, we're actually doing okay. So the number of lots in active development, like, you know, not just yeah. future lots that got their plat in 2006 and have been sitting on the ground for, um, you know, over a decade. <laughs> um, so the number of lots in active de development where there's heavy equipment on site, 
um, utilities and roads are going in. That's up 14% compared to this time last year. Um, so, you know, that's, that that's excellent. Now detached uh, VDL inventory uh, closed up first quarter with almost 32 months of supply. Um, wow. And that's up from about 20 months in the fourth quarter, but that is still below pre pandemic levels. Uh, when, when we headed into the re recession, our detached VDL inventory was uh, almost 37 months. We're at 32 months right now. Mm -hmm. So we still have less inventory or less, excuse me, less supply now than we did when we entered the pandemic. Um, attached video inventory is at about 21 months. Um, and that's up from about 19 months in fourth quarter, um, but significantly below the pre-pandemic level of 28 months. Um, mm. So again, it's just illustrating that you know, in, you see these lot delivery numbers and you're like, oh, OK, you know, we're heading in the right direction. Um, it, you know, it changes the perspective a little bit when you compare it to the pre-pandemic times. Uh, and one, you know, major kind of disclaimer I want to put on deliveries is that, you know, they're a lagging indicator. So most of the lots that are being delivered now and are in active development now, especially the earlier stages, most of those were started during the boom times. Mm -hmm. um, and they are, like you said, they're taking 18 to 24 months to deliver. I mean, in a lot of cases um, with these municipal slowdowns, it's taking 12 months just to get an LDP. Right. Um, so it's you know, <laughs> taking a year and a half, two years to deliver these lots. So the lots that are delivering now were started in, you know, early to mid 2021 when interest rates were still... 3.1%. Yeah. Um, and, you know, times were, were much different. Um, and so, look, we will likely won't see the effect of this slowdown um, that started in the middle of last year when interest rates and mortgage mm -hmm. rates went through the roof um, for another 12 to 18 months, right? right. Um, you know, when lots that were started in the, that would have been started in the back half of last year or early this year would have been delivering. And that's going to especially hurt because we believe that that's when demand will actually return in earnest, right? Right. Um, yeah. And so the lots that are delivered that aren't immediately already spoken for by builders before you know the first tree is cleared, they're going to be gobbled up immediately. It's right. going. You know, there's a a feeding frenzy for housing from consumers. There's going to be a feeding frenzy for lots for home from builders. I mean, there absolutely. already is. Um, and when demand actually returns, um, it's it's going to be a bloodbath. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, and, and I seen I think that you know there's this thought process out there with some home buyers that if they just wait, prices are going to come down. But let me just tell you, with lot development, you know, as you were saying, if it takes eighteen to twenty four months just to get the LDP, guess what? You know, whoever owns that land is paying all that carry cost and all that time it takes to get that approved. So all of that is being passed on to the house. You know, the final price of the house because somebody's got to pay it. And you know, builders and developers can't stay in business if they just absorb those costs. So you know, it gets passed on to the builder, which, or I'm sorry, to the buyer, which is interesting, but. And I think it's interesting to see what the predominant price point is in today's market. So talk a little bit about, you know, kind of the average price and who's buying those homes. Yeah. Um, so the first quarter of this year was actually a major turning point for new home pricing in the Atlanta market, because for the first time in Atlanta's history, the dominant price range was the 400 to 500 segment. Um, historically, that three to 400, that's been the sweet spot for new homes um, for like years and years and years and years. That's the, the largest mm -hmm. market share of homes sold have come between 300,000 and 399,000. No longer. Um, so home sales in the 400,000s accounted for more than 30% of all new home closings in Atlanta. Um, and over the last 12 months, the share of new homes sold below $400,000 has declined by 34%, whereas the share of new homes so sold above $400,000 has increased by 60%. That's um, crazy. But how much of that do you think is just because 
they just can't meet that price point. I mean, even out here, you know, I'm way out here in the X burbs in Cartersville. I rarely see anything in the threes. It's almost all in the fours. Right. Well, because the land inventory is so constrained, land prices are, if anything, going up. They mm-hmm. might have plateaued over the last six to nine months. But now that the spring selling season is off to a good start and builders are you know, feeling a little bit more optimistic. They're back out in the market looking for land and lots. You know, landowners know what they have. Um, They know the value. And honestly, they are happy to sit on their land for as long as it takes. They are not going to drop their prices. Um, So, you know, that's definitely, as you mentioned, being passed through um, ultimately to the buyer. Um, But, you know, construction costs are still up. You know, things like concrete and you know, while, so- while softwood lumber and, and some inputs have come down, others definitely have not. And we're still dealing with a labor shortage as well. Um, so all of those factors are are really not only propping up, but, incre- you know, driving increases mm-hmm. in, in home pricing. Um, and, you know, this shift in pricing, this continuous upward trend, in in new home pricing hurts even more when you consider that the that increase is far outpacing the increase in wage growth and mm-hmm. median household income in this market. So you know medium household income in Atlanta is about seventy eight thousand um, dollars. And you know given certain inputs like assuming a six and a half percent mortgage rate. And, you know, a family is spending a max of 30% of their gross income on their mortgage payment. Mm -hmm. That means that the max home price that that median household could afford right now is $310,000. Which is why we're seeing $310,000 do not not exist. They don't. Um, Yeah, they just don't. And, and, and so, you know, putting it in that perspective, um, you know, really puts it in focus as to how unaffordable the Atlanta mm-hmm. market is for a huge majority of the people that live and work here. Mm-hmm. Um, now, that being said, you know, as I mentioned before, there, there is always going to be some demand for homes. There's... Right. There will never be zero home sales in any market and especially right. not in Atlanta. So the people who are still buying right now, um, they fall into a couple of categories. Uh, one, people who have to move. Mm-hmm. People who um, they need their in-laws or family members to move in with them and they need more space. People who right. move for jobs. I got mm-hmm. transferred. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm in a new market. I, I've got to buy a house. So right. those people are still buying houses um cash buyers Mm -hmm. so So all these boomers and the gen Gen x and boomers and and even older millennials yeah um they now have a ton of equity in their homes oh Uh, yeah and especially you know the the gen xers and the boomers where all their kids have moved off and now they're looking to downsize Mm -hmm. you know a lot of them are selling their five bedroom 3500 square foot house they've got just a massive amount of equity um and then they're downsizing um and buying a a you know a less expensive home and so they're cash buyers they're going Mm -hmm. in there and they're essentially writing a check for the home they're living in so they don't care what the interest the right because they're not going to pay it um and um and also the you know their investors fall into that category so you know during the the boom period 2021 you know investor purchases were making up like 30 to 40 percent of all home sales that's come down a little bit but atlanta is still a top market for single family rental like scattered lot single family rentals um and so we are still seeing a you know investor acquisition activity in the double you know representing a double digit market share right um so there's also people who are willing and able um to make larger down payments to kind of soften the blow of 
having a higher mortgage rate right. than maybe they currently have. Um, and again, there's a lot of crossover with that Gen X and boomers. Um, you're not going to find a lot of 31 year olds who have enough cash in the bank to make a 50% down payment or even a 40% down payment. Um, but those buyers who are willing and able to do that, it softens the blow of these, you know, increased mortgage right. rates. Um, and so they're still willing, you know, to stretch their budget a little bit and buy. Um you know, people who are able to buy new homes and take advantage of builder programs where they're buying down. Buying down, yep. yep. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, there are opportunities out there for people buy, you know, for new homes where um, you know, if they work with the right builder in the right community, that instead of, you know, being saddled with a six and a half percent rate, um, they're looking at five and a half percent or five percent. And that really yeah. sometimes is enough to move the needle for people. Absolutely. Um, and we're even, and I found this very interesting. Um, and I actually, I overheard conversations about this earlier this week at a, at a greater Atlanta home builders association meeting, but we're even starting to see some existing home sales occur with seller financing. Oh, options. wow. Yeah. Um, because if I have to move or I uh -huh. really need more space and I need someone to buy my house, it's really tough right now be huh. because of where mortgage rates are. But if I do like a for sale by owner and I can offer seller financing at 5%, right. as the lowest mortgage rate that the person buying my house could go out and get is 6.5%, that makes my house a more attractive option for some buyers. Right. Um, so I found hmm. that very. I haven't seen any of that yet. That's cool. Yeah. 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 And look, I'm not saying that that's, you know, that's the new trend and everything's right. going to happen like that. <laughs> but, you know, from my perspective, that didn't exist at all 12 months ago. No. 24 mm -mm. months ago. And now the fact that it's like being talked about at all, even if it only represents 5% of transactions. Yeah. yeah. That just kind of shows you kind of interesting. Yeah. People are getting are creative. Right. Creativity. Now. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Interesting. Well, golly, lots going on. Well, any predictions for what we're looking at for the rest of this year? Yeah. Look, the rest of this year um is I think going to look a lot like the first quarter looked, you know, I will say that I am, um, I think we're all very encouraged by this strong start to the spring selling season. I think the metrics and the stats that come out of uh, the second quarter data are going to be very telling um, mm -hmm. as to what really we're in for for the rest of the year, um, you know, first quarter when not adjusted for seasonality is always kind of low. No one wants to move right after Christmas, pull their kids out of school. Right. Um, so, you know, I think the period that we're in, you know, right now, and then also through the end of summer, July, right. August, people like um, to be in by August, you know, that's right. Because school starts second yeah. week in August in most places. So I think that that is going to be, um, really, really the, the indicator for where we're headed, um, in terms of, you know, projections, I don't, I'm not seeing vast improvements, you know, on a, on a, you know, year over year basis. I don't think no. we're going to look at fourth quarter data and it's going to blow first quarter data out of the water because I don't mm -hmm. think that interest rates will be back at 4% by the end of the year. Um, you know, in fact, you know, depending on, you know, how things go with the larger economy, um, you know, some economists predict that we will enter a very mild recessionary period, depending on what happens with with GDP, although I will say that consumer spending, um, which comprises, you know, makes up 70% of GDP has really held strong. Like we, as consumers, we are still spending money. We're good at spending um, money, huh? Yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, I, I'm not banking on, on that specifically, but it's certainly a, a potential and there's just so many unknowns in the larger economy. Um, you know, buyer sentiment is still, home buyer sentiment is still down. Um, you know, interest rates are still high, inventory is still low. Um, and most people when surveyed do not think that now is a good time to buy a house. Um, right. so look, I'm not expecting 2023 to be an amazing year for Atlanta real estate. Um, 
you know, it might even fall below pre-pandemic levels when it's all said and done. Because again, 2019 was a was, was a, a great year. year. Yeah. And it demonstrated very solid growth over right. the year before, 2018. Yeah. But I will say that I do believe that this is short-lived. Um, from my perspective, you know, we we saw pent up demand coming out of the recession when people went four months without being able to buy a house. People are about to go two years or at least a year and a half mm -hmm. not being able to buy a house. Atlanta alone has over 900,000 millennials aging into the sweet spot of home ownership. You know, the 30 to 35 range, yeah. almost a million millennials. And look, not all of them want to buy houses. Some of them are happy to rent or mm -hmm. live at home or, um, but most of them do want to buy houses. Um, and so the fact that we've basically shut off the tap in the market mm -hmm. for 18 months. I mean, we thought we had issues with pin up demand before get ready. <laughs> um, and from my perspective, the sticker shock of high mortgage rates is yeah. going to, I mean, we're already seeing it um, is going to wear off. Like when rates went from 3% to 6% over the span of two or three months, it was like, it felt like the end of the world, especially if you were trying to buy a house during that right. period. People have been seeing, you know, above 6% interest rates since last June. Right. Um, so it's a year now. Yeah. yeah. They're getting used to it. So it hurts less. Um, And right. in my perspective, as soon as rates hit five and a half, five percent which is in line with the long-term average if you're looking right. at 40 year data the average mortgage rate is like just above five percent yeah so to me that that will be the gate opening right for absolutely for to yeah when interest rates look they're never going to be three percent in our lifetime again they're definitely never going to be below three percent like they were for a second um but i feel extremely confident that they will be below six and five and in a, the, a relatively short period um so you look as that's to me mortgage rates are really going to drive to drive you know when buyer demand returns because it has, it's having such a big impact on affordability mm -hmm. um, and atlanta specifically you know we're a top you know relocation um destination for you know young professionals for baby chasers you know the gen x and the boomers um who you know want to be closer to their grandchildren right. we have an extremely diverse and resilient economy we've been largely insulated from some of these major tech layoffs that are affecting other metro areas um, Atlanta has been and continues to be a really good place to live and do business that's not going to change. Uh, the underlying fundamentals of the Atlanta housing market are extremely strong. And in my opinion, as soon as mortgage rates fall back a little bit closer to you know their long-term average levels, demand is going to go right back through the roof. Um, and then, you know, we're going to be back to dealing with we don't have enough houses, we right. don't have enough lots. Enough lots. Right. Um, which us working in real estate. That's a good problem to have. It's not a bad um, problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, if yeah. I, you know, decide to buy a house, I'm gonna flip teams. And I'm <laughs> um, but um, but yeah. So that that's kind of my take on oh. the rest of the year. I wish I had like a more firm, you know, prediction that I could tie to numbers. But you know, honestly, my answer is it 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 just depends. But I do believe that the pains that we're feeling right now um, are not going to stick with us long term. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that you're right. You know, you're, you're correct. Your crystal ball is correct. And we'll just cheer on 5%. Come on, 5% will be our new I'll even mantra. settle for 5.5%. Yeah. Personally, I think that that's going to be the tip. I agree, yeah. 5%? Five, 5%, 5 It'd be a feeding 5%, frenzy. 5% is going to feel like 3%. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I think you and I could talk about this all day. 
Yeah. So we'll see, we'll see where it goes and we'll have to have you back on and see where we land as we go into 2024. Um, but for now, I'm going to say this is a wrap for this week's Atlanta Real Estate Forum Radio. I want to thank um, Katie Fiddler for joining me. Oh, before I let you go real quickly, if people are interested in reaching out to you and getting more information um, on you or St. Burke or Drepec, where's the best place for them to go? Yeah. So I, oh, I, as you mentioned, I could talk about the market all day. All I day. Could- yeah, I don't even need like back and forth participation. I can <laughs> talk to a wall about the Atlanta housing market. So look, you feel free to email me. Um, you know, my my email is uh, k a t i e f at stburke.com, which is s t b o u r k e dot com. You can also visit St. Burke's website, which is s t b o u r k e dot com. Um, and for our, our parent company, Drap Hat Capital Partners, you can also find them online and on LinkedIn. Um, their website address is Drapac, D-R-A-P-A-C, capital.com. So look, I'd love to have a, a deeper discussion with, with you. Um, pick your brain about what you're seeing in terms of the market, whether you're another developer or an, an investor or a home builder. Um, so yeah, feel free to reach out to me. I'd love to you know have a discussion or grab a coffee. Um, and Carol, thank you so much for Absolutely. your time. I love coming on and um, yeah, just, just appreciate uh, appreciate the invitation. Absolutely. Well, thank you for joining me, Katie. And now I'm going to say this is a wrap of this week's Atlanta <laughs> Real Estate Forum Radio. On behalf of our show sponsor, Denim Marketing, I'm Carol Morgan, your show host. I'd like to thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed today's show, please go to iTunes and give us a positive rating and review. If you'd like to make sure you don't miss a show, then go and sign up on iTunes, Stitcher, or Spotify and set those to download automatically. If you're interested in being on Atlanta Real Estate Forum Radio, then send me an email at carol at denimmarketing.com and let me know what you'd like to talk to me about on air. With that, I look forward to seeing everybody right here again next week. Atlanta Real Estate Forum Radio is made possible by Denim Marketing, the publisher of Atlanta Real Estate Forum, Atlanta's favorite source for real estate and home building news. Denim Marketing is a comfortable fit, like your favorite pair of jeans. Denim Marketing tailors marketing strategies to meet your specific needs and niche. Try them on for size. They will work to create a perfect fit for your company's marketing program. Call them at 770-383-3360 or send an email to info at denimmarketing.com. For more information on Atlanta Real Estate Forum Radio or to inquire about being a guest, contact info at atlantarealestateforum.com. Check out the radio show by visiting atlantarealestateforum.com or by listening to the show on your favorite podcast app. And if you enjoyed today's broadcast, we'd sure appreciate a rating and review on iTunes. Thank you again for listening. And we'll see you next time on Atlanta Real Estate Forum Radio.